In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I take this Figma website design, which I designed using assets I generated with AI and how we bring it into Framer to make a fully responsive functioning website. We're going to be using the Figma to Framer plugin and I'm going to be showing you guys how to utilize it to make your life a little bit easier. Let's go. Okay, so let's say a client comes to you and they own an aquarium and they want you to make them a new website. They don't have any good imagery or video. This happens a lot when you're designing a website for a client, they just don't quite have the assets yet. Now you have two options. You can either design a website that doesn't require assets or you can design a website that shows a concept of the types of assets you can get for them. For this concept, we're gonna generate some assets using Midjourney. Now what I have in mind for this website is the hero I think should be this big, large aquarium that shows some people looking into it. Family of three, man, woman, young girl standing in front of a large aquarium glass. All of these I think are looking pretty good. I think we're gonna choose this one down here because I like the flat profile of it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna upscale this. So let's go upscale. 2x now this is the image that it gave us this is a lot sharper than the original it's not perfect bear in mind this is just a concept to show the client the type of assets we want to get for real so let's copy this and bring this into our figma file so if we paste that into our hero section it's a very simple website that i've just made for the purpose of showing how we're going to take it into framer but you can see here we've got this fixed header this hero section with our main call to actions feature boxes here for discover shark feed learn and down here we have a final sort of call to action and a footer section very simple website a few quick things before we use our framer plugin so how you set up the file in figma is going to help the plugin do a better job so for one we've named all of our sections which is going to be useful in our hero, you can see we're using quite a lot of auto layout. Framer stacks act in the exact same way as Figma auto layout. So if we have an auto layout in Figma, it's gonna apply that way in Framer immediately. So it kind of just save us a bit of work. We can actually do a lot of the heavy lifting in our Figma file. So when we move it over into Framer, there's less stuff to change. So here we have our hero items. This is in an auto layout with this. You can see there's a gap of 32. Then we have an auto layout here. These are sitting horizontally and then there's a gap. If you imagine this in Framer, these are all gonna be stacks. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry, it'll make sense once we jump over into Framer. Having things as an auto layout is just gonna save you turning them into stacks later on. If you use auto layout a lot in your workflow anyway, then this step won't really change anything. If you don't use auto layout for everything like me, then kind of play around with the Figma design and try get everything working like how a stack structure would be in Framer. Okay, so it's time to make a new project in Framer and we're gonna call this the deep below. We'll go over to our Figma and then let's click on our main frame and we'll go up here to plugins and we're gonna choose the Figma to Framer plugin. If you've never used it before, then click down here, Framer, and then here it is here. Got this layer selected, then let's click on it and you can see it's copying all the layers there, all the images, and then we can click copy. And then if we click on our desktop bit here, we can just do Command and V and paste that in. It's uploading all of the assets from Figma straight into Framer. And this is the biggest benefit of this tool. It just does a lot of the stuff. It gets all your assets over. It gets all your styling over. Now there's going to be tweaks because I'll show you it right now. So let's see what it's done. We have the design over, but one, we can't scroll and two, it's not responsive. So first things first, let's click on our desktop and then we'll go layers. Desktop, we want to go here and we want to click on this layout button. Now we're going to press this for most things. We want most things to be a stack layout. Now we'll click on this. We don't actually need to change anything else. We'll just keep that as it is. This here, we're going to do the same. Now you'll see the layout will shift quite dramatically. This is actually what we want. So let's take our header here because we named everything and then let's drag that all the way to the top we'll drag it all the way outside of that one that we just made. Let's go up here and then we're gonna change this to fixed and then let's say 32 and then that's gonna give that 32 pixels from the top and it's gonna be fixed so that when we scroll, it'll stay at the top of the screen. We'll go down here to our hero and then let's drag this out and we'll just drag that there 
and then that's going to sit at the top of the page. This is actually the background color of our page and we want to apply that to our main page here. So if we copy and paste that here, now that's going to apply the background color to the entire website rather than just the background color to everything that was contained within there. We'll make a few changes to our hero. So if we click on here, we want to change the height of this. We actually want this to fill 90% of the viewport, so the screen size, and we want it to be responsive like that. So we're going to change the height to fit content. And then here on the min max, we're actually going to give it a min height of 90 and we'll change this to viewport. So this is gonna fill most of the screen, 90 viewport height. And you'll see that if we preview it now, that this, this whole section here down to here is actually 90% of the viewport. We have this little gradient strip that sits at the bottom. So let's go position absolute with this and then we'll go down to here and then we'll press zero and that'll make sure that that sits at the bottom of the hero so you can kind of see it there and then we also want to go into that and we want to go width where you can see it's given it a fixed width we'll go width and we'll go relative and we'll go a hundred percent and then now that's filling up a hundred percent of the screen we're getting somewhere with this let's go to the rest of our content so we'll go the deep below let's click on this and let's change this to main and then for height we'll actually go fit content. And then for desktop, you can see here, the reason it's not letting us scroll is because this has got a fixed height of 1000. And if we change this to fit content, you'll see that we can start to be able to scroll. We're getting somewhere, it's not quite fully responsive yet. So we'll go down here to our section that we renamed main, and we're actually give this a max width of 1400 pixels. Now what this is going to mean that when we click on here, you'll see it's only going to expand to a certain point. And then once we bring in the page like that, it's starting to be responsive and resize with whatever the screen size is. You'll see we're getting some weird warping with our background image there. When we bring it in, it's um, resizing it a little bit differently. So let's just click on our hero. We'll go down here to image. And down here where it says stretch, we'll just change this to fill. Very easy. Now it's going to resize properly. Our images down here are already getting resized properly. And our image down here needs to be changed in the same way as the hero. We'll go down here to our end call to action. And we're actually going to move this outside of our main section because we want this to span the full area of the screen. And then we're going to drag our footer out as well. And we'll put that underneath it. So if we go on to our end call to action, width, we've got it set to fill. Then we'll go down here to image. We'll make sure that that's going to set to fill. If we go down to our footer, we can actually give this a max width of 1,400 pixels as well. Now let's preview this. Scrolling down. This is responsive. We'll quickly fix this gradient by going zero and we'll change that to zero and we'll change that to zero as well. And then now you can see the gradient is sitting at the bottom. And then basically that's the bulk of it. You just wanna go through your design and adapt it here and there where you feel like it's overflowing in the container. So our footer you see is getting cut off. So what we could do there is we can go into here. It's applying this massive gap. So let's just take that away completely. And then let's change distribute to space between. And then that's just gonna apply equal padding between everything within the footer and i think that looks fine and eventually you'll get to a point where it's starting to look good in the browser and when you resize it it's going to resize with the page itself at a certain point every design will break and that's what breakpoints are for so let's quickly do that once we've got our design looking pretty good, we'll go breakpoint here and we'll go tablet. What this is going to do, this is going to make a tablet view based off of what we have here. Now you can see our header is getting cut off and that's because that's got this fixed width of 1200. Let's change that to relative and we'll just go 100. If we start tweaking things in our tablet view, it's not going to change anything on our desktop view. So 
let's take the padding away at the top there here we can go like that and then let's actually change the padding on these a little bit let's make this 24 and 24 i'm doing this very quickly because i don't want to make this video too long and framer is a whole thing you could spend hours doing a full course on which i might do in the future but this video is just a little introduction to getting your designs over if we go down here to our sections what we might want to do here is turn them into a stack like that we'll do that on all of these we can reverse this one here by just dragging the box on top that way it's going to be image and text image and text all the way down we'll actually change our footer to be a vertical stack as well it's all about playing around at this stage and whatever you change on this screen style wise isn't going to apply to the desktop but whatever you change on the desktop screen will apply to the tablet and then let's click breakpoint again we'll go to phone here we're going to want to make this a lot smaller so it fits in these buttons we're going to want to change so they're a stack here i'm just making some final touches on the mobile view and you can see it's mainly just making things fill their container size one final touch we're going to head back over to mid journey and this image that we've done so this is our upscaled version we're going to animate this into a video so we're going to click on here low motion and mid journey has magically turned it into a video now this is only a five second video so what we're going to do is we're going to click on one of these and we're going to do extend auto and then here we have a 13 second video this is what we're going to place our hero image with a video that's going to sit up here and there we have our fully responsive website i just wanted to make this video to show you guys my process of just getting a quick figma file over into framer i did this whole thing in less than an hour you'd obviously want to spend a good few hours or days just getting this dialed in with all your button styling and there's a whole framer tutorial that i might do in the future but i just wanted to make this show you guys the quick process of how I kind of do it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Design, AI, making websites. And I'll catch you guys soon with another video.